Hey everybody, welcome to The Real Show Barbecue. Today we're going to be making some Brunswick stew. I'm here with my buddy Scott Adams. He's the owner of Adams Roadside Barbecue here in Goldsboro, North Carolina. He is gracious enough to allow us in his kitchen and he's going to show us a recipe. Scott, you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Yeah, uh, we've been here uh, about eight years, been in the restaurant business about 20 years. And uh, we kind of started Adams as a uh, little hobby. And it kind of blew up and we do brisket. Uh, Texas style brisket, Memphis style ribs, uh, East Carolina chopped barbecue, pulled pork, hickory smoked turkey. Uh, all our sides are homemade. Um, it's, it's just a uh, it's just a barbecue shack, barbecue stand, and come in, you'll get a good story, meet some some nice people, and get some good food. Awesome. You got a YouTube channel as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We got a YouTube channel. We made a few videos. Um, Adams Roadside Barbecue YouTube channel, and they were. They were made a couple years back. A couple of them are, are more frequent, but thing is, big thing is, we made them and we had a lot of fun doing them. Awesome. And you're also on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Uh, have a website, AdamsRoadsideBarbecue.com, and then we, uh, like I said, we're on the Adams Roadside Facebook page. I think uh, Instagram and then Snapchat. Awesome. I think that we're doing. We're trying to do it all. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Be sure if you're in the local area to check him out. You got some great stuff. I'm here on a frequent basis nothing I can say bad about it great stuff friendly folks to deal with so let's go inside and get this uh, Brunswick stew now in the kitchen Scott's gonna get us started on this he's gonna tell you a little bit about uh, the origin of uh, Brunswick stew as well so go ahead Scott Brunswick stew was uh, uh, from, from what my research and what my my grandparents and all have told me and what I've read a little bit it came over with the uh, the, the, the settlers the German settlers um, that, that settled in North Carolina and and kind of uh, migrated east and uh, they needed something to do with their their leftover meats and they were trying to forge and make things last longer so what they did is they, they combined some meats with some vegetables and cooked it for an extended period of time and, and put some tomatoes in it and uh, called it uh, stew so that name uh, um, kind of is synonymous with, with barbecue restaurants is Brunswick stew and especially in the south and uh, Supposedly, from what I've heard, in uh, North Carolina, you you have to uh, you have to have more than one meat uh, for it to be a stew. If you have a just one meat, it can be beef soup or uh, uh, chicken soup. But for it to be a stew, uh, it needs to be uh, two meats, at least two meats. Sometimes we'll put uh, in, in here at Adams, we'll put uh, two meats. We'll put pork and we'll put chicken. And uh, sometimes we'll, we'll uh, spice it up with brisket, uh, especially in the winter months when we have a lot of extra uh, brisket from some of our cuttings. Um, like I said, everybody has their own little recipe. I'm gonna give you something very similar to what we make here. Um, you know, everybody kind of guards their, their recipes, but I'm gonna give you a really good base. If you'll follow this, uh, uh, wherever you are in the country, you'll be getting a, a Southern or Eastern North Carolina Southern style Brunswick stew. Awesome, let's get started. All right, start with, you're gonna use some uh, some uh, good base. We're gonna go with crushed tomatoes. What we like is the, is the real good uh, red, uh, more of a, uh, it's more of an Italian crushed tomato. And uh, we just pour that in. We're gonna pour right on in the, in the pot here. We're gonna take our vegetables and you wanna mix it. So we're gonna take some corn That was uh, two yep. pounds there. Yeah, about two pounds of corn. We put a little more corn and a little more, um, a little more green beans in ours. And uh, we'll put about half of this next one in here. So we have our corn. Three pounds of corn. Yep. I'll put the uh, information in the description, guys. Yep. We'll do some uh, baby lima beans. A lot of people call them butter beans. That's what I call them. <laughs> there you go. All right, and before we put our other uh, our other vegetables in, we're gonna take our barbecue. This is Eastern style chopped barbecue. And uh, what we do at the end of the day, we're thinking, well, what does everybody do with the barbecue? Well, we don't warm it up, but what we do with it is uh, we take and save it for our stew. And, uh, and we don't normally have a whole lot, but we'll take and save it for our stew or we'll freeze it. We'll put it in, put some barbecue. 
How many pounds do you think that is? That was about uh, about three pounds. Okay. Um, and then we'll take about two pounds of chicken. This is pulled chicken. We pulled it off the bone. Um, that we had, we had to mix a little bit of fresh and a little bit of uh, frozen chicken here. We'll take the chicken, pull the bone out, leave it good and chunky because it's going to cook down and it's going to shred as it cooks. And that's kind of the key is is letting this stuff simmer and cook uh, a good two hours. Um, sometimes you'll you'll find it that'll even cook even longer than that. Now we'll put the rest of our vegetables in there. That's for string beans. Yeah, for string. That, yeah. Not, not and it's better uh, <laughs> better on the on the green beans. It's better to use frozen. They'll have some water in them. Um, you go with canned green beans. You're gonna have that little bit of a canned taste unless you really rinse them off. Same way with the butter beans. Um, the frozen, uh, especially, is a little bit easier to make, especially on these uh, uh, winter months. You'll find that you can get some vegetables. Now, fresh, fresh vegetables in Brunswick stew is is really really good, but uh, this day and time, that's one of the things that you, you just um, uh, you won't find very often. But if you can ever do that, that'd be great. All right, then we'll take in one of these recipes. We'll call it a little bit of salt, uh, just more than salt. I'm gonna put a little bit in here. We have a funny way of doing our salt here at Adams, and we're gonna throw some pepper. And this is to taste. I believe in a little bit more spicier Brunswick stew. Then we'll take. Some ketchup, believe it or not, we put ketchup in our Brunswick stew. Some people just use crushed tomatoes, but we're wanting to get a little sweet flavor. So what we'll do is we'll put a little ketchup. Here. About two cups. Maybe. Yep, about two and a half cups. All right, that'll add you a little bit of sugar content there. Now a lot of people don't do this, but we do. And this is one of these recipes we add it occasionally. Um, most of the time, a little bit of cayenne pepper. And you say, well, what are you doing? I wouldn't put, it's to taste favorable, but we're cooking a pretty big pot here, so we're just gonna go maybe about a teaspoon. Uh, and now we're gonna take these ingredients and uh, we're gonna clean out our canned tomato with some water, pour it in here, put about, maybe about three and a half cups of water with this, start stirring it and uh, start the cooking process. We filled our can up with uh, some hot water to wash our vegetable, uh, our, our crushed tomatoes out. We're gonna pour it in here. Let it sit down. Take the large gigantic spoon. And we're gonna start stirring. And you're like, it's gonna take a minute or two to get it all going. We're gonna add some more water. And then we're gonna put it on the stove. And uh, sometimes, uh, uh, if you're at home and, and you want to add, you'll see some restaurants, some people have recipes where they'll put potatoes. So let's bring in potatoes. Right now we're going to add some potatoes also to our Brunswick stew. All right. Thank you, Jack. That's my son, Jack Adams, uh, who is learning the restaurant business. Uh, he wanted to make sure we put his uh, sweet bourbon barbecue sauce up here. Um, but he brought our potatoes in. You take those potatoes and you let them cook also. With the uh, with all your other ingredients, and the big thing with Brunswick stew is stirring it, slow cooking. Um, we're gonna we've added our cayenne. We'll get it uh, get a good base going, get it good cooking. And about halfway through, what uh, I suggest or what we have found success is we'll pour a little bit of vinegar, um, barbecue sauce, or you can put some Texas Pete or some Franks, and you can kind of season it up to taste and uh, that'll give you a little more hot uh, flavor profile um, and, or you can add more black pepper you know it all depends on the taste and what people like but that's the base ingredients right there for a brunswick stew and uh, we're going to put it on the uh, we've got everything on we've got the burner on here we're cooking it up bringing it up and you want to bring it to a boil a lot of people will take and keep stirring the stew what we do is we get the get the stew going and uh, just kind of keep everything stirred up. Make sure none of our spices stick to the bottom. And like I said, we're gonna cook this two, two to three hours at a slow tent. We'll, we'll bring it up. When we feel like it's reached the boiling point, we'll put our uh, lid on it. We'll put a lid on it and, and uh, just let it kind of cook and simmer. 
break down the barbecue, break down the chicken, get a little shred, and then we'll add a little bit of North Carolina's own Texas peat. Um, I, I, I like it. My runs are still a little spicy. The recipe here we made for you. Um, we're gonna put just a hair of Texas peat in here. That was maybe about half a cup. Um, I would recommend tasting so you don't get it too hot. And uh, once again, once you, once you put the Texas peat in, you get it going, stir it up. Now, a lot of people like their Brunswick stew thicker. Um, there's a couple things you can do to get your Brunswick stew thicker at home. Um, one of the first things I learned was, was taking crackers. You can get saltines, you can get rich crackers, crush them up, throw them in there, and the starch will thicken your stew up. Um, what we've done in the past when we made a made a big pot of stew, uh, what we've done in the past is we've taken some uh, some cornmeal and put the cornmeal in there, and as it was boiling, cornmeal, and take it and just stir it, and that will thicken your stew right up. Uh, if you get your stew too hot, and you need to change that around, uh, you can always add some ketchup or some brown sugar, and uh, you can add more water. Uh, that'll cut your heat down if you're making your stew and you've made it too hot. Like I said, uh, the thing about barbecue is everybody's got a recipe. Uh, I give you a great base. I give you uh, um, our insight on how we do our Brunswick stew, and if you'll follow those directions and uh, and try it, you know I think you'll come up with a really good recipe, and then you can season it up to taste. And that's our Brunswick stew. We're gonna cook now for about about two, two and a half to three hours and we're gonna let it go. All right, now we got the finished product. We've got Brunswick stew that's cooked for about three hours. This is my son, Jack Adams, again, who's learning the barbecue uh, business and he is gonna sample for you our Brunswick stew. He likes our Brunswick stew, he likes it spicy. So we're gonna let him taste it for us and see what he thinks. What you think, bud? Give him a thumbs up. All right. All right, guys. Uh, I appreciate Scott allowing us to come into his restaurant and his son Jack. I uh, hope this is uh, helpful to you. Uh, don't forget to check out Scott's website, Facebook, and YouTube. Got some great stuff. And again, if you're in the Goldsboro area, come and check him out. You won't be disappointed. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless.